Welcome, Honors Chemistry. Um, today we are going to be talking about enthalpy. This is going to be a follow-up to our, our uh, video we saw the other day on enthalpy changes and looking at exo and endothermic reactions. So enthalpy is sometimes referred to as the heat content of a system. And we'll see why it's called heat content in a few minutes. What we're going to be focusing on is the change in enthalpy, and it's a change in potential energy of a system. This is going to be chemical potential energy now from reactants to products. And the enthalpy change is equivalent to the amount of heat that's being either released or absorbed. And this is why it's the heat content, the amount of energy that's released or absorbed as heat by a system. And enthalpy change is denoted by delta H. The H stands for enthalpy, the heat of a reaction. So these are equivalent terms. Enthalpy change and heat of a reaction both mean the same thing. Now, we've got two different kinds of reactions. The first one is called an exothermic reaction, where we get heat out. So that exo um, prefix, and sometimes we just refer to it as exo. So exothermic heat is being released to the surroundings and the surroundings are getting hotter. So we have two things we're worrying about here. We're worrying about the system. So the heat is being released by the system, which is the reaction that we're looking at into the surroundings. And the surroundings get hotter. The reactants lose potential energy. They're going down. So if we look at the diagram over on the right, this is gonna be an example where we start off with the reactants being high and I'm going to use just the generic term reactants here, starting off at a high potential energy. So potential energy is getting higher as we go up. And the reactants then are going to lose potential energy over time as the reaction proceeds. So sometimes this is called the reaction coordinate. And we're going to have the products at a lower potential energy. And so the delta H is the difference between the reactants and the products. And it's a negative number because of the fact that we're, we're going down. So the products minus the reactants is less than zero. So if we say in this example, we have CH4, methane and oxygen burning to make carbon dioxide and water, and this is balanced for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that the heat is released, the heat is produced. And in this case, 891 kilojoules of heat. And this is for each mole of CH4 that's burned. So this is basically the heat of the reaction. We can put it as a product because it's a product, it's being produced. We're gonna make this a product in our reaction. Now, when we make it a product, when we put it into the reaction, we're going to make it a positive number. And the 891 kilojoules then can be thought of sort of stoichiometrically. And we will use it stoichiometrically in a few minutes um, to determine how much heat is produced for a certain mass of particular product. But when we talk about it in just writing the delta H, the delta H of the reaction is negative because of the fact that the product minus the reactants is less than zero, right? Something lower minus something higher is less than zero. And we'll write kilojoules per mole of reaction, Rxn meaning reaction. So that means one mole of the reaction as written. And so the stoichiometric coefficients become important here for, for one mole of methane, for two moles of water, making one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. Now we've already drawn the energy diagram for this reaction. To draw the energy diagram, if we're gonna put any, um, any units on here, what I would do is I would start with the reactants at zero and then put the products at negative 891 because it's kilojoules, so we don't have to put the units there. Um, but you could flip it around. You could put 891 up at the top 
and zero down at the bottom. I just like to show that it's going negative. In terms of stoichiometry and doing a little bit math with this, if we start off with 2.00 moles of methane and we want to know how much heat is released, we're going to start with our two moles of methane. If you want to, you can actually stop the video right now, see if you can come up with the answer and come back, check with us in a moment. I'm going to multiply that by, I'm going to spot you the molar mass, one mole of methane, pretty easy, 16.04 grams of methane. So the grams of methane, oops, ah, I'm sorry. I don't even need to do that. Um, oh, it is. Ah, you know what? There's a mistake in here. That should be grams of methane. So change that. I will make sure it's changed um, before I upload. It will be correct on your, on your sheet. Uh, grams of methane. You know what? I was right the first time because we got grams down below. So we don't even need to do this. Okay, sorry, no uh, no points for you. Two moles of methane, and we're going to do, um, there's 891, let's make it negative, kilojoules for every one mole of methane. So now we can bring in the stoichiometric coefficients, and two times negative 891 to significant figures, is negative 1,780 kilojoules. Now, this is the amount we say released, but the negative sign means that it is released. So um, you could just say that 1,780 kilojoules is released. Now let's make it a little more, a little more fun for you. And now let's go ahead and use grams of methane, so I knew I had a gram somewhere in here. So the grams of methane, come on, this is going the opposite direction from what I expected. My screen is very sensitive. Let's try this again. So eight grams of methane. Now we need the molar mass. One mole of methane, and it's 16.04 grams of methane. And again, negative 891 kilojoules for each mole of methane. And you could do this for any one of the substances and that's going to get you 444, negative 444 kilojoules, and that's how much energy is being released. So pretty straightforward calculations, hopefully. Now, when we switch over to exothermic, or sorry, endothermic reactions, endothermic reactions are essentially the opposite of exothermic reactions. In an endothermic reaction, we're going to have heat being absorbed by the system from the surroundings. Come on, this is a little disconcerting. So heat is being absorbed, absorbed by the system. Remember, the system now is the reactants and the reaction taking place from the surroundings. There's the heat again. Because heat is being absorbed by the surroundings, the surroundings get colder. So up above, we saw a combustion reaction. Combustion reactions are used to produce lots of heat. The surroundings get hot. This is a more um, unusual reaction in that um, it gets colder, mostly because endothermic reactions, as we'll see in a couple of days, are more difficult to to have happen spontaneously because this is the unfavorable unfavorable direction and a lot of you guys got that backwards on the homework 
So it's unfavorable because this is really going upwards. And when we draw the diagram below, we'll wait to draw that until it says to in the instructions. Um, we'll see that happening, uh, going what we call uphill. I wish that would stop doing that. Really. Okay, so an uphill change. And we actually say, chemists actually call these uphill and downhill. An uphill change is not the favored direction. The delta H is positive because the potential energy increases. So let's see how that works mathematically and diagram, uh, diagrammatically. So this reaction, we're taking ammonium chloride. Now, we're actually taking a solid. Really? Sorry, I'm so sorry if that's making you dizzy. I don't know why it keeps doing that for me. So we're taking the solid. And we're actually just dissolving it. So there's actually water here. Okay. I can't beat them, join them. Um, dissolving technically is not a chemical reaction, but because of um, the way that it works, we can treat it as a chemical reaction. And it turns out that when ammonium chloride is dissolved, 14.6 kilojoules are absorbed. Now, because it's absorbed, it goes into the system, because it goes into the system, it's a reactant. So going in, everything that goes in is a reactant. We're gonna put it positive as a reactant, 14.6 kilojoules going into the reaction. And when we write it out as the delta H, as the enthalpy, the delta H for the reaction is equal to positive. I'm gonna put the positive sign there just to emphasize it, 16.4 kilojoules and that's per mole of the reaction now this energy diagram is going to be exactly the opposite that we're going to start off low with our reactants and again if you want to put zero kilojoules down here and we're going to then move up to a higher state picture this as a hill if there was a ball on this hill, pushing it up is not an easy thing to do. You've got to put energy in. And this is exactly what's happening. Energy is going in. And so we have our products here. And the delta H, always reference the delta H to where you started. The delta H is positive in this case because the product minus the reactants is greater than zero. So the, the level, the products are higher than the reactants. And then up here would be our 14.6 kilojoules for where the products ended up. Now, the opposite of what we did up above where we found out how much uh, heat was being released, we can now find out, uh, the go the other way and find out how much ammonium chloride must have been dissolved if we take 20 kilojoules of heat being absorbed. So start off with our 20.0 kilojoules. And just like stoichiometry now, that's per mole of the reaction. That's per mole, one mole, since we have one mole of the ammonium chloride is for one mole of the ammonium chloride as well. So we have one mole of ammonium chloride absorbs 14.6 kilojoules. And I want to know how many grams, so the molar mass, 53 point, that's a bad looking, 353.5 kilojoules for one mole, I'm sorry, not kilojoules, grams of ammonium chloride for one mole of ammonium chloride. And kilojoules cancel, moles of ammonium chloride cancel, and tells us that we need 73 0.3 grams of ammonium chloride to absorb that much energy. Now, in a subsequent lesson, we're going to learn how to actually measure some of these delta H's of our reactions. But for now, um, we're going to move on. The next video is going to be um, essentially the data for a uh, for a demo demo that um, we would have done in class. 
If you want to, one of the things you can do to get ready for that demo is to go find a, a thick rubber band and uh, hold on to it, but don't stretch it. Hold on to the thick rubber band to get ready for the next demo. All right, see you in a bit.